Hi, I'm Cameron, and I don't just read comics, I love them. On today's episode of Cameron Reads Comics, we are introducing my friend Savannah to her first comic with Captain America, Man Out of Time by Mark Wade and George Molina. For anyone that wants to get to know Captain America better as an introduction or just read another origin story, I'd recommend that you look no further than this series. Fans of the podcast may already know that Mark Wade is my favorite comic book writer, and I think that this is another series where he just strikes gold. As always, there are full spoilers ahead for Captain America Man Out of Time. Consider yourself warned. And remember, please go follow us on Instagram at Cameron Reads Comics to see what I'm up to, what I'm reading, and maybe give us a five star rating and review on iTunes. Now, here is your summary for Captain America Man Out of Time. The story opens in Germany during the heart of World War II. Captain America and his sidekick, Bucky Barnes, have been fighting the Nazis throughout the war. Towards the end of the war, they find their lives winding down. They get sent on a mission to take out a bomber drone. As they chase the drone, they land on top of it and try to disarm it. Bucky realizes the drone is about to detonate. As Cap ejects, Bucky is caught in the explosion. Fade to black. Cap wakes up to find the original Avengers staring down at him. He's wondering who these people are, where's Bucky, and as they try to take control of him, he escapes and winds up back in New York. But this isn't the New York that he'd left previously. He wanders the streets, exploring, and happens upon a mugging. He tries to prevent it and takes out the victim's predators. Suddenly, as he checks to see if the person being mugged is alright, they pull out a gun on him, shooting Captain America, leaving him to bleed out and die. Cap has a flashback of the hospital during the war, but wakes up to a modern emergency room. As he leaves, he runs into a familiar face. Bucky Barnes. Except, it's not actually Bucky. It's Rick Jones, the sidekick to the Avengers. Rick needs a hero's help to find someone that he's looking for. Cap thinks that he's in a dream. He's bound to wake up back in his normal New York, and Rick thinks that this is a mental patient. But as Rick walks away from this fraud, Cap throws his shield and performs a glorious gymnastic routine that only the true Captain America can. Rick has Cap hop on the back of his motorcycle, and they head to his apartment. They locate where the man is, but when Cap finds the man in his apartment, it's not a man. It's a Martian. Now Cap really believes he's in a dream, but he's unsure. When Rick asks him what makes him unsure, Cap says he looked up what happened to FDR. When he finds out that Franklin Delano Roosevelt died, he understands that he never could have dreamt something that cruel. So, understanding that this may be a reality, there's only one thing to do. Find a way back home to 1945. Tony Stark and Hank Pym start experimenting on Captain America to find out if this is actually the real Captain America. And it appears to be true. Cap asks them if he's healthy enough for the return trip back to 1945, and he tells them he needs to go back and save Bucky. The present isn't his home, and it's never going to be. He needs to save his friend. Stark takes Captain out for a night on the town. What that looks like is a private jet on the way to the Smithsonian. Stark wanted to show Cap the history that he'd been missing. They go over the moon landing, the civil rights movement, and more. Captain America is so impressed by the museum. Eventually, he meets the current sitting president. The president tells Captain that he can't return home. The ramifications of bringing that information from the future into the past would be too great. The president tells Cap, despite his pleading, that he can't go into the past, and that's an order. Captain America understands, he salutes the president, and he then weeps at the feet of the Lincoln Memorial. Next, Rogers walks around the Arlington Cemetery when he's visited by Thor. He's reflecting on wars that he hasn't heard of, men that have died fighting and dying in wars that he knows nothing about. But there's an important tombstone missing, that of James Buchanan Barnes, Bucky. Thor tries to comfort Steve in the ways that only he knows how. If Bucky is who Steve says he is, then he's feasting in Valhalla, where the brave live forever. Why would Steve want to take his friend from there? Wallowing in self-pity isn't the best way to honor his friend. As the Avengers continue their escapades, Steve can't find any records on Bucky or Peggy Carter. There's only one person that he can find, 
General Jacob Simon. A bedridden General Simon helps Steve bridge the gap in the world that he's lost in. They watch baseball, and Simon describes to Steve the idea of a designated hitter. He then goes on to explain that baseball has gone to all hell. General Simon describes to Steve a different kind of world than the picture of progress that Tony Stark painted for Captain America. He talks about drugs flooding schools, the Oklahoma City bombing, carjacking, identity theft. The list goes on. Something that hits Steve hard is that they've lost the war in Vietnam. How could the United States have ever lost a war? Stark showed Steve the I Have a Dream speech, but he never told Steve what the fate of Martin Luther King Jr. was. Eventually, General Simon passes away. As Steve is leaving the funeral, he sees Carol, the general's nurse. Being an immigrant, she says that she'll need to find work soon or have to move back to her home country. It's immigration law. She's willing to scrub toilets to stay in America rather than live on the countryside in her home country. When Steve asks her why, she reminds him that it's America. When Steve gets back to Avengers Mansion, they're on their way to a mission. An extraterrestrial being named Kang has challenged the Avengers. He comes from 2,000 years in the future. He's a time traveler. As Cap fights Kang, the alien realizes that Captain America is also not from that current time. When Cap gets the leg up on him, Kang sends him back to 1945. Cap is back in New York after World War II, but it's not the same New York that he left. Both his city has changed, and he himself has changed. He didn't realize how much he'd acclimated to the 21st century. How is he supposed to live in a world where baseball is resegregated? How wealthy is a bank account with only $100 in 1945? It feels like Steve sees the past in black and white after seeing a future full of color. As much as he wanted to be back there, he knows that he doesn't belong. Back in the 21st century, Rick Jones gets an A1 alert coming from Avengers Mansion. This can't be possible if all of the Avengers are fighting Kang. Captain America found his only way back to the future was to place his ID card in a photo that he knew would be at Avengers Mansion. He leaves a note for Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four to pick him up exactly at that point in time. Luckily for Rogers, the plan works. He gets rescued, and as all of the Avengers are subdued by Kang, he's able to take on the Time Traveler with great ease. He's able to rescue all of his friends and reconcile his place in this new world. The story ends with Captain America camping by himself and listening to an array of CDs, including the likes of Bing Crosby and Radiohead. There's always going to be something worth fighting for, and Steve Rogers will always be a soldier. Okay, well, welcome to Camera Reads Comics Podcast, episode 14. Hello, Sav. Hi, Cam. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really excited oh, about this. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> I'm like, we're so glad you're here. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be, we're going to have so much fun. Um, So, was this your first comic book that you have ever read? This is my very first comic book I've ever read in my whole life. That is... Okay, I'm going <laughs> to say it right now. Kyle was telling me... He didn't think you were going to like it. And so you can be completely honest. Did you like it? I really liked it. Take that, Kyle. I really liked it. Take that, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like in here last week, he's like, Cameron, off air. He's like, I don't think she's going to like it at all. <laughs> and I'm like, well, 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 Kyle. <laughs> she knows what you know. It was, it was really good. Like generally, I enjoyed it as a whole. Good. For sure. We'll get into that. Okay. But yeah. for, first and yeah, foremost. Yeah, yeah. Um, what had your relationship been with fandom and like pop culture or geek culture? Have you ever been a part of like a fandom before? Um, no, not until I met Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Just honestly, I had never 
uh, like read comics. I barely was into like superheroes. Like I've always loved Disney, but never had been interested in like superheroes of any of any sort. Marvel, nothing until Kyle loved Star Wars. Loved Star Wars a lot. And then I was like, okay, I should probably watch the Star Wars <laughs> movies. Yeah. I should probably like get a clue when it comes to that. And I did, and I ended up loving it. And then. We started watching the Marvel movies. I love Marvel. We actually just finished Iron Man to Endgame. Well, now it's... You you guys did a Mm rewatch? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And that's how you had asked me what superhero I wanted to read about. And that was right after we had finished. And I was like, for sure, Captain America. Oh, man. Yeah. (laughs) You're telling me. So it was perfect timing. That's why we did this. Um, (laughs) So... Yeah, no, wait, so you didn't have, like, any sort of, like, Harry Potter affinity, or, like, mm-hmm. Lauren Vera had said she liked, um, what's it called? Uh, she loved Hunger Games. Like, you- Oh, yeah. Um, I read the Hunger Games, like, when I was younger, obviously, and I really liked it when it came out, but I never, like, was a fan after. Like, I was like, oh, great, and then the craze was kind of over, and I was like, next, you yeah, know. The movies was- came out, and we were, we were done with that. Yeah, and it was great, but... I never was like, oh, I'm a fan of the Hunger Games, really. But so yeah, never, never geeked out on anything necessarily <laughs> until until un- now, until Star Wars, and until now. Okay, so so then uh, before we get into this text, what mm-hmm. did you think about like comics as a medium, as a platform for storytelling? Before you read this, was it intimidating? Was it like kind of weird? Um, you know, I didn't put too much thought into it, but I I thought it was a cool like hybrid between store like child storytelling and adult content. Mm-hmm. And I didn't ever like when I think of reading a book, obviously you read like a page book, like just a bunch like of pages, prose, chapter. Yeah. Or you read like a kid's book and it's a bunch of pictures and easy reading mm-hmm. easy reading. But um comics I feel are a hybrid between the two where it's like super inviting for any age. Mm-hmm. to read and that's that was my like previous idea of comics it was like oh i feel like it's a picture book with like in-depth content that's yeah. good but still an easy read yeah it's always hard like that's probably one of the biggest hurdles i because obviously i validate this medium and i yeah, love yeah, it yeah. so much yeah. i'm just like i think about it all the time it's all i want to talk about yeah. I literally started a podcast <laughs> because i love this medium yeah but um it's hard when you i guess the 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 prerequisite that people have with it mm-hmm. is Oh yeah, like I read Dr. Seuss and I'm like, it's not like that. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um I feel I feel that. Yeah. So that's cool, cool, cool. Um yeah. and then I guess after reading something like this, mm-hmm. after you're reading your first mm-hmm. comic, did it change the way you thought about it or see it now? N- not really. I after reading it, I was like, that was it pr- that was pretty much what I expected it mm-hmm. to be. Um what I didn't expect and what we'll get into this, I guess, later once I think you're gonna ask me this question, but <laughs> I really liked how it tackled like real world issues and that was something I was not expecting. And so, yeah, that was, that was what surprised me about it. And I liked it. Yeah, absolutely. I feel that mm-hmm. I, I like, this is my second time reading it and mm-hmm. I was so caught off guard with what I guess the power in this storytelling that yeah. was captured. I was just so amazed and I thought it did so well. So yeah, we'll get into that. Um, did any factor catch you by surprise, like within this story, any of the uh, layout or the writing or the art or the colors? Did Were you surprised when you read this at all? Um, I wasn't surprised, but I think I, I was shown a comic book by Kyle and I didn't read the comic book. But the only reason he showed it to me was because it was fully watercolor. And I was like, oh, I love that. Yeah. You know, like that's really cool. And I had no idea that comic books were different, um, different like art form media, like, yeah. like watercolor gouache, you can, or like the co- classic comic style. You yeah. can, you can tell, even though it's a printed page, you can tell what, um, like what paint they used or what kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. You know for, what I'm saying? You know, okay. So for context for my comic book fans, Sav is kind of wearing, it's a Marvel comics t-shirt, <laughs> classic tee, but it looks like it's a, uh, John Romita Sr. kind of Avengers team, which I, mm-hmm. I would assume that you are like the very classic yes, yes, yes. comic book style. Mm-hmm. But maybe Kyle is reading something, and I'll show you something like this later. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. David Makabuki, which is a very uh, watercolor, almost like 
abstract. Bill yeah. Sinkevich kind of art style, which is which obviously works in this medium that allows for so many types of um I guess art art artistic integrity mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. just expression. So um what I guess what I'm trying to say is she was surprised by that, which is so yeah. cool, and that's what we want. And in this, I feel like in this, in the one I read, it's pretty classic comic mm -hmm. art. Like, the shirt I'm wearing, that's what he looks like in the comic. Yeah. And that's why I got the shirt, because <laughs> I was like, hey, I feel, I was just telling Cam before, right when I walked in, I was like, I feel like I can wear this shirt now, because I read a comic book. Yes, <laughs> she it says is qualified. Marvel Comics on it. <laughs> one of the biggest barricades I'm trying to knock down, too, is the fact that, like, Sav, if you are enjoying comic books and superheroes, you are just as much a fan of the stuff as I am. I'm like, oh, you like it? You're a fan. There's no qualifiers or anything. So, Well, thanks, Cam. And I'm also like, oh, included. you're you're wearing that shirt? Now I'm going to rant at you <laughs> about the glory of your shirt. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Uh, so when I asked you who you'd like to read about, you said Captain America. Of all the characters in the multiverse, mm -hmm. of all the publishers, why did you choose Captain America? Well, I chose Captain America, one, because he's my favorite in the movies. Yeah. I love, and also Chris Evans. Come That's on. what I'm saying, yeah. Come on. <laughs> like, he's so dreamy. <laughs> but character-wise, I feel like I'm drawn to Captain America most because of his selflessness. Like, I find in every movie I watch, I'm always drawn to the selfless character and the one that would, like, just has a very sacrificial uh, character characteristics you yeah. know um and that's what i like most about him and i feel like i like his i like that he's patriotic i like that he's just willing to like lay his life on the line for whoever need be and that's that's why i chose him as my favorite yeah no i totally feel that and actually yeah. I, I all my fans are probably sick of this because i always bring this up but i love captain america so much be, his portrayals in the movies were like really good, mm -hmm. and then I started reading some obviously some of the comics based on him because I probably with it only spent the last like eight years reading Marvel, mm -hmm. which is I spent you know fifteen probably reading DC, yeah. and so that's just my inclination. But I found that especially with this writer and in a story like this, um, he is so fascinating. Like he's a man out of time. He is um, like. Going back to, I guess, you're talking about moral uprightness. I thought one of the major, like, coolest things in the story is that it talked about he, how he is kind of a moral center mm -hmm. for his universe existing around him. Mm -hmm. And um, what they were showing in this this text is that his moral center is kind of subject to the time he's in. Yeah. Which I thought was so cool and, yeah. like, unique because there was times, you know, two of my favorite moments in, in this entire story was when he – it's a weird favorite, but I just enjoyed them a lot is when he comes back like automatically to like our day and age yeah. and the nurse, or I'm sorry, like, the doctor, female doctor is helping him and he's like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, this nurse. And she's like, I'm a doctor. And he's like, he's like, that's so great. And she's like, why are you smiling? Yeah. She's like, what? <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I'm like, that is so neat. And then the, the second moment, which was, um, when he goes back to the past and he's talking to the little African American boy and yeah. his father and he's like, You'll be a Dodger someday. Yeah. And then he said, like, he, don't tease him. Exactly. And it's like he is a moral compass. He's trying to do the right thing in both yeah. areas, but he's so affected by where he's from and it is subject to change. But even in both settings, I think he st he he is so he's still so like virtuous mm -hmm. and upright. And mm -hmm. I just thought it was so impressive. And I think that's a thing that this story nailed about this character in a way that um, I love. Yeah, I agree. I, I liked that. I liked that when he he knew that the things that were going on in the world, like when he came when he came to our time, were wrong. Like when he saw the sex trafficking victims in the back of the car, mm -hmm. or when he saw. I don't know. I know there, there's, there's a bunch of examples, but he was like, Oh, that, that kind of sucks that that's happening here. Like, this isn't the same. It was almost, I got the vibe of like, this isn't the same America that I was fighting for back then. And I was like, Oh shoot. You know, like, you're like this is so I deep. Like, I was like, wow. I mean, that's what <laughs> I I've been expecting saying. This. <laughs> you're like, you're going to start a podcast now. I get it. <laughs> um, 
So did you find this story accessible as a new reader? Like I realized when I gave it to you and I, this has happens a lot when I give mm-hmm. someone their first comic is like, Oh yeah, the continuity is just, of course all the Avengers find him and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But did you like, as your first foray into this, yeah. did you find it accessible? I did. I found it super accessible. I found it, I found it pretty, pretty straightforward and easy to understand. I had talked to you about this in the past before I started before I read a comic. Before you were a comic aficionado be, that yeah, you are now. Yeah, before I am this big comic genius. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, that I found that you had to know the background of the hero bef- before you could even, like, jump into a comic because there's so much to know before. Like, about how did they come about? How, what, what happened before of what I'm reading? Because that has to do with what I'm reading. And I found that this, this comic... In particular, I didn't have to know much going into it. The whole, like, coming back from the ice situation, I had known that from the movie. Mm -hmm. And I kind of didn't understand it. That's in this, right? He says says that. He makes it clear in this. Yeah, yeah. They show him, like, dethawing. Yes. Okay. For some reason, after I had read, I was, like, more than halfway through it, I was like, wait, this is post-ice. And Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't. For some reason, my eyes, like, skipped over that part in the comic, but I had known it from previous, like, from watching the movies. And I was like, oh, maybe I was supposed to know this before. But then I looked back, and I was like, oh, okay, they, ma- they made sure it was it was stated. But, yeah, super accessible for anybody who, for their first comic. Yeah, I thought totally. so. Totally. Yeah, there's a, this one's a little more subject to, like, the continuity within the comic books, mm-hmm. because in the movies, it's, like, Nick Fury who finds him, and he gets holed up in S.H.I.E.L.D., but this one, like, originally... Captain America was a Golden Age character, and so he was around, like, during World War II, and, like, literally his first comic appearance is him punching Hitler in the face. Super <laughs> iconic. And um, he gets kind of shelved after the war because, okay, we won. Why do we need this, uh, you know, propaganda-esque Americana character? Um, and so he gets shelved. He, they don't publish books about him for a while. And then Stan Lee and the co-creator of Captain America, Jack Kirby, come on, and they – Ooh, I got so passionate. I hit my mic twice. Um, <laughs> they they come on and bring him back to the Avengers, and the Avengers are the ones who find him frozen in ice. Yes. Okay. Yes. And mm-hmm. so that's that's why like he's it shows him with and the Avengers have very weird costumes on because those are their retro original costumes. Yes. So that is diff- That's something that's different. And so um, yeah, I I actually I wrote that down as one of my notes was like. Am I looking at Tony Stark right now? I can't, I can't tell. But then he puts the Iron Man mask on. And I'm like, I even the Iron Man suit looks different. So I was like, I'm pretty sure that's Iron Man. But it is. It is. <laughs> he has like the triangle like yes. faceplate. And let me just tell all the audience that is my favorite Iron Man costume. Okay. I'm like, we never saw it in a movie, but I think it is. I don't know. I just think it's neat. Yeah, I like that. I Thor was identifiable. Identifiable. Yeah. When I saw him, I was like, okay, we're looking at the Avengers because that is Thor. Yeah. <laughs> so we must be looking at the Avengers like, right now. There it is. <laughs> That's so funny. And then actually, I don't know, fun fact for you too, I guess mm-hmm. Giant Man, who they they kept referring to as Giant Man, yes. that's Ant-Man. Yes. I knew that because he was with Wasp. Yep. Okay. Look at you go, girl. There See, you yeah, go. That was a, I, <laughs> I didn't need to explain anything right there. <laughs> um, so uh, did you have a favorite moment? I did. I think... Okay, my favorite moment of – I really pondered this because I wanted it to be an accurate answer for you. <laughs> my favorite moment, I think, was the ending and how it wasn't necessarily a happy ending where mm-hmm. it was like, oh, Captain America is exactly where he wants to be. It was like, no, I'm just – I'm going to accept where I am and like pretty much be a hero even in this situation that I'm in where I'm not back in my time. I'm kind of just here – in this world that's kind of crappy right now, you know, but yeah. he's like, you know what? I can still do good. I can still be an Avenger or whatever. And mm-hmm. like, it will be great. And so, and that was the ending. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, okay. Like I, I feel as though it was like an acceptance where it was like, okay, you know what? Here I am. I'm going to be a hero and it's going to be great. And that's, that was my favorite overall part mm-hmm. of the whole and that goes back to captain america being my favorite where yeah. he was like he just has this selfless attitude that's like it's not about me anyways you know yeah. So, yeah yeah no i i really feel that and actually i think one of the cool things that i think 
this book was able to hit on that sometimes I feel like the movies missed out on is the fact that he's a true patriot and he's a mm-hmm. true soldier. Mm-hmm. Like all he wanted when he came back to our time for the the first time was to rescue his friend Bucky. He's like, we need yeah. to go back in time and exactly. I need to yeah. save my best friend because I don't know what happened to him, which mm-hmm. is very noble. And obviously like everyone, m- m- hopefully everyone knows what happens to Bucky. And, yeah. That was his whole mindset going through the whole book was like, okay, but what about Bucky? (laughs) Yeah. He's like, and then one of my favorite, I remember one of the moments that like lingered with me the first time I saw it, I read it was when uh, the president at the time says to him, that's an order. And then he like salutes because he's a soldier and a patriot first. Like he has this very authentic, true and non gimmicky hope in America and uh, our country, which is so cool. Like it's a very special thing that like, I I picture the character is that yeah. now you know what I mean because right. of something like this that showed me that in the in the movie one of in the Captain America movie I don't know which one exactly it is I think it's the first one but when you see it is the first one when you see him run to the bomb and he like he the bomb is about to explode it's like a test yeah and the bomb's about to explode and, and he runs up and he like puts himself <laughs> yeah. over the bomb and that was like. Oh my gosh. When I watched that, I was like, yeah, he's my favorite. No, he's I like him hero. the best. <laughs> he's a, he's a hero. <laughs> and think. also, also, a, I feel like a good example for kids who are looking for a favorite superhero. Yeah. I feel like he, Captain America is a really good example where it's like, I'm patriotic. I'm sacrificial. I'm selfless. I'm all these things. Whereas say, I love Tony Stark and I love Iron Man, yeah. but he's, he's not that he's kind of an yeah. arrogant, he is, he arrogant hero. He still does good things but he he loves money he loves yeah. fame he loves all these things it it evolves as time goes on i'm i'm speaking about the movies and i mean i think he's a, a a fine example but captain america i think morally he is a really good example for kids and that's what i like about him too and i think that's kind of what what he represents in a very similar way mm-hmm. weirdly to batman that he is someone that represents um the 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 potential for humankind you mm-hmm. know what i mean in, in a virtuous in a very real way and like i think people are drawn to batman because he doesn't have powers obviously and yeah. while cap does a lot of his nobility and everything that makes him special this is i guess from the movie too mm-hmm. from the first one is um it's not it's nothing not, none of the super soldier serum or the super heroics yeah. he's like he's just a, a an upright dude which is yeah. awesome and he he threw himself on the bomb when he was still scrawny. Yeah. <laughs> when he wasn't Captain America yet. And that I love everything about that. Great. You were you were you were a hero before you had powers. I'm or whatever. Ki- <laughs> Kyle, I she's really into Chris Evans, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into Captain America. Basically I mean also Chris Evans. <laughs> Here's a plan for Kyle that I'm just gonna tell you but you have to act surprise. I will throw a a non lethal grenade at it at you too and if he jumps on it then you are welcome all right that is i'm like i'm just doing my boy a solid yes um okay my favorite moment was actually when okay so the whole joe or the whole general simon relationship that he had i just thought was so amazing Mm -hmm. and the thing that really made it special was that he he had someone he could connect to yeah um but my favorite moment in the entire thing was when cap would talk to the bedside nurse uh at the end you know when his friend dies which is so unfortunate um what happens is well i just i described what happened already but what happened is um uh, he he dies and then she's like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make ends meet I don't think I'm gonna have this like way for myself in this place and he's like oh financially and she's like I couldn't do that like I couldn't take money from you and he's willing to uh, but he's like you're re- you're really willing to scrub toilets in this place and you know live a, a you know a harder life when you could go back home and you know be with your family and everything and when she just looks at him and she says. It's America. And I'm like, oh, that's so – because he was in this very disillusioned place after that relationship with um, his general where while the the earth or like America as he left it isn't the same place. And yeah. while they do have all these new thrills and me- medicine and technology and great uh, people that have come through, there's also so, a different kind of tragedy and like a different yeah. kind of pain that he's experiencing. So – 
the the idealism that still held up in there was so cool and I thought really well done. Yeah, I agree. I love that. And actually, here's a, um we'll just go into the, well, I'll wait for the next thing. Um did you have a favorite character? Um I mean, I the I say Captain America only because that was honestly the one character I could follow the entire comic like the entire way through whereas like the general I I liked him and I liked their relationship but I at first I didn't like quite understand where like who he was yeah I I, like, I had to go back and read it and I was like oh he's cool and then you had told me that your favorite was general and I was yeah. like okay I need to go back and like read his like who is he to yeah and I and I really like him as well but I would say Captain America obviously just yeah. because I could follow his story the best. Absolutely. Yeah. And kind of cliche protagonist. It's not. But. It's not. <laughs> I'm like, I just thought actually in the last thing, and one of the more recent books we read, my favorite character was Cap, and he was on. He was. It was a big event book, and he was barely in it. But when he did, there was like so much like levity that came with it, and just like, whoa, there's power that comes with this legacy character. So mm -hmm. I feel that, and so obviously mine was the General Simon. Mm -hmm. Because though there's this is a big Easter egg and one of the reasons I love comics too is these oh. Easter eggs. General Simon is actually so the two creators of Captain America were Joe Simon and Jack Kirby and Joe Simon was actually on his last legs. Uh, he was about to die. I think he died in 2011 when I looked it up. But this character, the general that he goes and gets, uh, you know, coffee with or plays chess with, uh -huh. that is a character based on his creator. Interesting. And if you were to look at the art page and look at who Joe Simon it was in real life, it's the it's the same person. That and is so cool. It is so cool. And I love like, Easter eggs. That is literally the best Easter. I'm like, <laughs> that is why I do this. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and so, um, seeing that character, and especially, I just feel like it's something very special to see a a creator with his creation, and kind of like I I can only imagine that Joe Simon could have been like that in his real life, and yeah. so. I really um I really appreciated that uh relationship and it was just so special. Yeah. I'm I'm glad when when Captain America did visit him in the hospital, I I kinda saw that coming just like in the previous page. I was like, Oh, I think he's gonna find this friend. You know, I mm. I, I feel like he's gonna find a friend. And when he did, I was like, Oh good, you know, someone to like meet meet him where he is at from his past. And um it was interesting the way that the general he was exposing America, like current America to Captain America and was like, this is how it is, man. Like, yeah. welcome. <laughs> and you could, I could kind of tell he was, Cap was like, I'm confused. Like, I don't understand what you're saying. And it, there was like a small part in it where there's like a, like a phone sex ad on the TV <laughs> that the general's like clicking on to. And you can just, even in the comic, the expression on his face is like, Huh? Like, yeah, I'm right. so confused. And it was interesting uh, seeing this, like, sort of idol character that, like, Captain America looked up to and is a friend with, where he was like, oh, maybe this is really how it is. Like, that freaking sucks. But at the same time, he didn't lose hope. And even the general, I, I feel like he didn't lose hope in Captain America. He was still like, do your thing, man. You know, like, mm. good luck. Yeah, and I, I felt that too. And I, I just really liked uh, that relationship I thought was so well done. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it there's I don't think any other character in the story could have like taken that kind of role to him because yeah. while, um, you know, Tony did show him all the virtue and like the, the, the prosperity within the United States yeah. since 1945, this guy who is an, you know, an elderly, a grumpy old man kind of character totally, is yeah. a very great representation and knowing that it is uh, someone, you know, for all intents and purposes, Cap Sage. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. like I just thought it was very, uh, it's very well done. And I was yeah. like, ooh, and it's such a fun Easter egg too. So it was, mm -hmm. I was very much a big fan of that. Yeah. I liked his personality approach to, to the letting him know how it is now, whereas Tony Stark's was just, it, it had a, it had a sort of, uh, how do you, what do you, what do you call it? Like a know-it-all mm -hmm. kind of attitude behind it where he's like, and this is the, where they go to Smithsonian or yeah. something. They're like, and this happened and this happened and this happened. And 
Captain America's like, okay, like, wow, that's awesome, man. And he's just like, and this, and this. And it was, it, it felt a little like, this is all you missed, man. Like, this is, this is yeah. it. Whereas the general is more like, hey, like, gets, takes it down a notch and is like, this is how it is. Like, ready, set, go. Yeah. <laughs> It it was good. Um, yeah. Did you notice any na- main differences from your perspective on like the movie Captain America and like this version of Captain America? Um, personality wise, in the character, not really. Um, but something I wrote down to talk about in a difference that I saw was we kind of already touched on it, but was the way that the the um, Avengers looked. Mm-hmm. Where I thought I'm super into just art in general and so i really i really like comic book art i think it's really fun and i liked that i had to figure it out like i feel like if i right off the bat knew who every character was i would feel this sort of parallel to the movie where because they were different and because like someone actually hand drew the characters in the comics like they're very different they look different and i i ended up liking that about the comic so that was the main difference i saw like visually Mm -hmm. um but besides that, I didn't see too many differences. Did you? What are the differences you see? Um, one that we chimed on earlier. I think this one is way more of a patriot. Yeah. Like, I oh, think okay. he's very much like, and and Mark Wade did the the same writer had done like a ten year run on Captain America. So, um, I read a bunch of that, probably ninety percent of that, and um. Seeing those differences within this character, uh, I I I noticed them a lot more here, um. I think his obedience to America and his loyalty, like the way he, there's a, there's a moment that the way he talked about Franklin Delano Roosevelt and he's like this man leading us through this great war and not being able to see it's like, I don't think we've seen very much pain from like Chris Evans, Captain America yeah. and like going towards, uh, uh, go, going like leaving his, his past behind. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Was, I, I realize that now that you say it for sure. And then, I think that my favorite thing in this one too that I really liked is that they gave him a chance to go back into the past because oh yeah it wasn't as rose colored as he remembered either yeah you know what I mean yeah. so um it was really oh that's when he goes into the diner yeah yeah that was like the second time he went back so he he's there he's in his time then he comes to us and he goes back to his time and then he's back to us yeah yeah okay yeah so I that's probably my biggest one that's the one I noticed the most um. And he runs into that, like, friend, kind of, in the diner, doesn't he? He runs into, like, yeah. this guy that he knows, yep. and he's like, what the heck? You know, it, this, yeah. you're not the same guy I own. <laughs> yeah, he's like, something's wrong with, like, Steve or whatever, and Air Rembrandt, as he called him. Oh, okay. And I was like, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was, uh, he's made, I actually also really liked, it. here's the difference, too, I really liked that he sketched. I thought that was actually a very cool, like, character kind of, I don't want to say trope or anything, but, like, a beat. Yeah. I thought that was so neat that he was like a, he, in his spare time, he liked to sketch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, in the beginning of this book, he, doesn't he talk to a friend in his, in his time? Is it the 40s? Yeah, he's like in the war. Right, right, right. While he's in the war, he asks his friend, like, or his friend asks him what, it might have been Bucky, I'm not really sure. Or some other guy. One of the guys. Yeah, one of the guys. He was like, what do you want to do when you're out of the war? Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't know. And this other guy's like, I want to be an artist or something like that. And I'm like, I feel that. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, that's so cool. And then like Captain America can draw. Yeah. Which I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, I didn't, that's a different character trait. He's never an artist in the movies, you know, yeah. but I thought that was cool too. A little, um, another fun difference. Cause it's not fun to see him like as a robot, you know, yeah. it's yeah. like it, as much as he, as he is a soldier and he is a tactician and he's everything else. I think it was a very cool way to just uh, like demonstrate him as like, also like he has a create, like, you know, he, he, yeah. he has an outlet for, for something. Yeah. I like that his, his character is, there's added characteristics onto the, to Captain America in the comic than there is the movie. But I guess that's why, you know, when people say like, Oh, reading a book is more, uh, stimulating to the brain than watching a movie because your creative senses can like kick in when you're watching a movie and it can, your character can develop as you're reading. But with a comic book, it's the same thing, except they just include it in the comic. They, they include it in the words and in the pictures, yeah. but in a movie, it's super, um, 
yeah. cookie cutter. Like everything is, is lined up. It doesn't give you any room to have input. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think a comic is a cool in between where it's not quite a movie, but there's still pictures. But then they also are like, I'm going to add these little fun things that Captain America likes in it, like that he likes art. And I don't know. I, I thought that was cool. Yeah. And I'm just realizing that right now. But there's a couple yeah. things that like that are like that in the comics. Like one of my favorite kind of like little moments like that is that Lois Lane's like, so like Superman's chick. Yeah. Or I guess it's his wife. Yeah. His wife right now in the comics. Um, She's like so messy. She's a, a big slob. And she's a obviously a world famous news reporter, and she has so many typos. She can't type for her life, and I don't know why, <laughs> but I just think that is the most brilliant thing ever in the world. Like yeah. she's a woman on a mission, but she can't spell mission. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm like so. I guess with Captain America drawing, I, I think it's just those little fun, neat, like yeah. endearing qualities that actually kind of make these characters like fallible and like real. And I wouldn't have known that if I didn't read a com- the comic like i would have just been like yeah you know this which mm. which is awesome he's still my favorite like yeah, from the movies name. but now you're like i relate to you yeah now i'm like okay now you're really my favorite like <laughs> now but, i want to read more comics about you you're like captain america you and i have so much in common yeah. <laughs> you and I have so much in common <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um not quite as selfless but definitely definitely has some some similarities that's so funny <laughs> um, how do you feel about captain america making his place in the world like he just like we were talking earlier. Like, how did you feel kind of about the arc of him making sense of uh, the modern day? Mm, I felt like I felt like he was. I don't know if this answers your question or not, but I I feel like he was trying to figure out the modern day as if like a child's trying to figure it out. Like I've kind of touched on this bef- like in in the last questions, but figuring it out like oh, wow, you know, things are just coming in his, his way and he's just kind of stumbling as he's going along. Like with the whole Dodgers interaction with the little kid, with the little mm-hmm. black kid, you know, he just thought he was, you know, being being normal because he knows the future. Like exactly. he knows that that could, could most definitely be a Dodger. <laughs> yeah. But I think that little like, not slip up because it wasn't, he had a happy he had heart behind it. Yeah. yeah. But with the dad saying, you know, he's just teasing you. And the, and Captain America's like, no, I'm being serious, you know? I, I found that him stumbling through the real world, I found it endearing. I found it like, oh, he's just trying to figure it out. Yeah. So I don't know if that answers your question or not. That's fine. Okay, yeah, cool. no, that's, that's the right <laughs> answer. Like, it's, I just thought, I just felt like, as I was reading it, it's just like, him understanding, I just really loved, like, I, you, I would take this in canon with, like, I feel like this is almost a story that takes place between Captain America 1 and Captain America 2 if you're looking at the films. Because yeah. it's kind of like his – he's making sense of this world. Yeah. You know? And so, um, like, him finding his place and, like, kind of balancing the 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 realities of where he came from and where he is now. I just uh, – yeah, no. So I was really into it. I, I just – no, no. That's my question. So I got yeah. – um, I got a couple more questions. Yeah. So number uh, – Number one in my last few questions is, uh, what did you think about the last issue when he went to the past? Did you like it? That was just the end of the book, right? The wait, what do you mean? You when he went back the second, like in the diner. Yes, like that entire issue. Oh, though. Oh, okay. Yes. Um. Okay. I don't. I don't know if. I guess I. I felt like it was, in a way, unnecessary. Like I felt yeah. like. It it could have gone without it. Yeah. Like going going back because that alien sort of guy was like, go back to where you came from, pretty much, yeah, right? Yeah. That King was, the Conqueror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, be gone, yeah. <laughs> and, and he was gone. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and um, he's like, all right, I'm back, mm-hmm. and I felt like he had this like sort of um excitement about him, and then he realized, oh, this isn't as great as I thought, <laughs> thought it was going to be because all my people are in the war still. Yeah. And, um, he was like, oh, I don't really want to be here. But then when he goes back, he's like, I don't really want to be here. So Mm -hmm. I felt it was like, maybe not unnecessary, but it was just like, it was a, it was a cool touch, but it was just like, oh, cool. Okay. I, I figured he was going to come back to (laughs) to the 21st century. Um, but yeah, it was all right. It was normal. Yeah. I felt like it was kind of a, you can have your cake and eat it too kind of moment, you know, where it's like, okay, you really want to go back? Let's go back. And it's not... Um, this is a bad example. I like feel arrogant saying it, but like one of my favorite, it's, uh, I wrote a lot of papers in college on like, 
uh, in the Odyssey, Odysseus, the main character, leaves Ithaca and pretty much uh, – that's for the Iliad. Then he comes back and um, Ithaca, his land that he's been – isn't isn't the same as when he left it. So mm. we can see other examples in like for me it's like I wrote a big paper on Green Arrow how Oliver Queen went to this island and then when he came back to Star City it wasn't the same place he left. For me in cat in this story, yeah. I think that's a very tangible way of Captain America leaving 1945, going back to 1945 and being like it's not the same place he left, yeah. you know. Yeah. So and he- I feel like there's no regrets like he because he went back and then he comes back to the 21st century after that. I felt I feel like he's able to live his life not normally, but just like in acceptance because he did go back and he did see like, oh, this isn't maybe what I expected, yeah. or like this isn't it's not the same. Yeah. And so there's like a no re- no regrets sort of situation <laughs> there where he's like, you know, I don't want to be there, I don't really want to be here, but here we go. Yeah. Yeah. No. Also, I, I was supposed to read the Odyssey in high school, didn't. Dang, it's okay. I know. <laughs> The, we did. You read this, and that's pretty and close that's enough. What matters? My summary was basically all you needed to know about the Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what would you rate this out of ten? I would rate it. I have nothing to compare it to. Just on a narrative, just story on like level. a on a story level. Okay. Just like, did you like it out of ten? Was it perfect? Was it not? I don't know. I would say it was an eight out of ten. I'd give it a B. Because I feel as though I liked it and yeah. I like totally got through it. I com- I didn't completely understand it, but I like yeah. I got got through it. I really liked it. I wouldn't give it a ten because I feel like a ten would be like seamlessly understand it through yeah. and through. Where I had to go back and be like, what did he say or like how mm-hmm. did that work? Um, but I would definitely recommend it to somebody else. So I feel like that is a passing grade. That is the more important part. It, yeah, and I wouldn't give it a C because. It didn't just stumble right through. Like, it was good. I you're, really liked it. You're just like me on our grading scales because <laughs> I do the same thing where I'm like, oh, if, if I give it like a 5 out of 10, it's an F. And yeah. I'm like, I don't think it's an F. I don't. <laughs> and, I'm, and people are like, no, but a 7 out of 10 is like really good. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, man, that's a C. Yeah, it like it, it got there, but it, it, it didn't do it gracefully. I feel that's you. a C. But a B, I feel like. It got there with with success. Like I liked it. I could understand it after reading it a few times. So I wouldn't give it an A, and I wouldn't give it. A C. I'd give it a solid B. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. Um, my my rating would actually also be an A because okay. I think it's really, really, really great. But I do think there are some plot holes, and I'm like, oh, some of the stuff. Like I don't know if it all completely worked for me, but I really, really, really like this. And my biggest, I, similar to you, if I find the story like. I, I'm willing to share it, or I, because I, yeah. you're the second person I've owned this to. But I'm just like, oh man, go check this out. You like Captain America? This is my number one like intro to Captain America book because I'm just like, I it is yeah. now my in my head like my number one Captain America like origin story. Yeah, you know it 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 tells his past and present well from the beginning to the end of the of the comic. But in the beginning, it was hard for me to like see where they're at. Like they're in the war. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't a hundred percent sure, quite honestly, if Steve Rogers, if I didn't know that character yet, cause he looks different. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I was like, I think this is Steve Rogers. (laughs) Yeah. Who's this blonde guy? And then I ended up like a couple pages in, I'm like, okay, he has the outfit on. So I'm going to go back and read it as if I'm reading Captain America. (laughs) But all in all really good. And, and I, I really liked it. All right. Um, then my last question Mm -hmm. is, would you pick up another comic? Based on this, based on your first one, do you think you'd ever try this again? Heck yeah. Oh, heck yeah. 100% I would. That's what we want to hear on this podcast. (laughs) I feel it's a little intimidating coming in with – it's I like comics because they're very inviting. But at the same time, I'm a little intimidated by them because of the thing I brought up previous is I feel like I want to know all the information before I start. But really, that takes the fun out of it. Mm-hmm. But I'm also one of those people who wants to know secrets so bad. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I just want to know. Like, I'll look up the ending of The Bachelor. Like, who wins on the first time? I know. My he, jaw he just, just Yeah, <laughs> literal jaw drop. Oh <laughs> Me my. and my mom do that. Oh and I'm, I'm that sort of personality where I'm like, I want to watch the series. I just want to know how it ends. So 
it's I know it's it's so weird. <laughs> It's so weird, but so with comics and going into this, I I chose Captain America 2 because I had some previous knowledge where I was like, okay, I can go into it with like somewhat of an idea of who he is. Whereas for an example, I'm looking around your room and... Yeah, she's looking at okay, the okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> I would say like, okay, Green Arrow. I like mm-hmm. know nothing about Green Arrow, like zero. So... If I were to read a comic from yeah. him, I'd be like, Cam, tell me what I need to know <laughs> before oh I jump gosh. in. And I know it's unnecessary, but that's just who my personality. But all that to say, even if you had no idea who Captain America was, like you said, it's like super introductory where you learn his origin story through this comic. And that's I really liked that. I liked that about it. And it made me feel like more comfortable with it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I'm glad you felt comfortable too, because mm-hmm. I don't know that's the point. That's why we do this is to share comics because yeah. I love them. Now, I guess uh, my last thing is, Sav, is there any place that my listeners can find you? Yeah, <laughs> plug <laughs> I, away, girl. I run, I run a small business called Savvy Soul, and I do all sorts of art, pretty much mainly calligraphy in various forms, whether that's logo design, murals. I have a shop where you can shop your little heart out. They're so online. Good. Oh, thanks, Cam. They are. And it's at Savvy Soul, S-A-V-Y-S-O-U-L, <laughs> on Instagram. And then I also have a website called SavvySoulCalligraphy.com. And it's pretty much the same thing as my Instagram, except that's where the shop's located. So, yeah, I offer lots of services and... That that is what I do with my days is run a small business. That is what we like to hear. So <laughs> thank you, Sav, for coming on the podcast. Remember everyone to go follow Cameron Reads Comics on Instagram uh, to catch up on what I'm doing, what I'm reading, and what I'm collecting. And then stay tuned next week for my friend Russell coming on for We Stand on Guard. See you later. <laughs>